thinking of the Lord and his love for me is my best thought by day or by night. Welcome back to Transfiguration in Oakdale. We had try to have podcasts once a week published uh, either on Wednesday or Friday, depending on when I can get her done. Here at Transfiguration, we exist to bring all those in the East Metro to Christ, the source and summit of our daily and eternal lives. We try to have podcasts that inspire you to love our Lord and to bring others to Christ. And today we're going to try to do that by reading over Psalm 139, one of my favorite psalms. I've done the, I did this a couple weeks ago with a different psalm, and I heard some decent enough feedback to to do it again, and not uh, microphone feedback, actual people saying they enjoyed it feedback. So today we're going to go through Psalm 139. It's going to be prayerful, hopefully. And I, I encourage you to find a space or a, a time where you can be in some, what what the people call some head space that is clear and free and be able to think about it. And even if not, maybe listen to it a couple of times. I'm going to read through the whole psalm first and then uh, and then go through it again and, and have some reflections on it. And I'd like us to just, you know, try to take it seriously as if these words are mine. I liken Psalm 139 to the, the, the poem, The Hound of Heaven. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a good one. I think it's powerful that we know that the Lord loves us really intimately. And even if we've ran away from him, he's still there. And we, for better or worse, we can't escape him. So I'm going to start it here, 139, Psalm 139. I'm, going to, I'm not going to read the entire thing. It's a little bit long, but I'm going to read most of it. O Lord, you have searched me, and you know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from afar. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? If I ascend to heaven you are there. If I make my bed in Sheol, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning and settle at the farthest limits of the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, and the light around me become night, even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as day, for darkness is as light to you. For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My my frame was not hidden from you, when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depth of the earth, your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In the book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. Lord, we ask for these words to be real in our hearts and our minds. We ask that we actually know them. I think I was at a conference a couple weeks ago now, and 
They said some of the most important things are the things we take for granted. And sometimes it's easy to take for granted that God loves me. Yet it's the most powerful thing we could know. One of the songs that week that was, or that retreat or conference that was repeated, Thou my best thought by day or by night. So, Lord, this is the song, Be Thou My Vision, kind of a Irish hymn. Thou, and it just struck me every time it was sang at the conference, Thou my best thought by day or by night. It's pretty humbling. I, I fancy some of my thoughts sometimes, you know. And thinking of the Lord... And his love for me is my best thought, by day or by night, no matter when. Even the most clever or funny ideas I might have, even if they're just funny to me, or if they're funny to millions, thinking of the Lord and his love for me is my best thought, by day or by night. So, Lord, we ask you to help us to know these truths. We may have heard them a thousand times, and that's part of the difficulty of maybe being a cradle Catholic or knowing our faith really well and going to Mass every single week. I don't want to say it's a hindrance, but it's a difficulty. We can easily take it for granted. We can easily take for granted The words that are said at Mass, all of the words that are said at Mass are powerful words, and we should listen to them. This psalm today, it struck me today to do this podcast, I've been wanting to do it for a while, is because this psalm was read at Mass today. And I heard it, and it strikes me every time. There are times where I cannot even read this first line without stopping and crying. Because the Lord of the universe... He searches me, and he knows me. Sometimes it feels like we're grasping in the darkness for God. We're grasping in the darkness for God when troubles or whatever else beset us. And it seems like sometimes we can't find him. He's silent, and and sometimes it's... It, It's a temptation to be angry. God, where are you in my troubles, in my trials, in my difficulties? Just like Job, and 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 this is you know almost like a synopsis of Job. But to think about the Lord instead, He searches me and He knows me. Do we feel known in the rest of the world? Sometimes we don't feel known to the people that we're supposedly closest to. Sometimes they might not feel like we know them either. It certainly might feel like the Lord doesn't know us because he's so far away. But I encourage you to hear these words today in a real way. Oh Lord, you search me and you know me. Like you really know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up, you discern my thoughts from far away. It's not just uh, we get this glimpse of Santa Claus here, you know. He knows when we're good and bad and blah, blah, blah. No, 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 no. This is a father that loves us. And I think part of it is just that there's nothing hidden from the Lord, not to freak us out although it might be a good thing to keep us integrated in our lives, but that he knows us. Not just the big stuff, not just the times when we are doing something great or we think we're doing something great, but he knows when we sit down and we stand up. I think that's an integral part of this. You know, it's not just... I think the psalmist is writing this because those are very ordinary things, sitting, standing walking, running. 
Lord, you know us when we sit down. We do that all the time. Seems like a mundane thing to do, you know? Yep, I sit down, I stand up, I sit down, I stand up. I move about, no big deal. Go to the bathroom, sit down, stand up. Lord saying to us, nothing is too fundamental. Nothing is too ordinary that I don't know it. I know you that much. I know you that much. I know when you sit down and when you rise, I ser- you search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all of my ways. Now this might feel a little, oh no. But I, I encourage you to think of that as a good thing. Even before a word is on my tongue, O oh Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. I think that's part of it too. Not just, oh, you know all this stuff, but your hand is upon me. I'm not doing this alone. I don't have to do this alone. You, Lord, are with me. When I sit, when I stand, when I walk, when I rise, when I lay down, you are with me. Not just when I feel it. Because how many people sit down and think, yeah, the Lord is with me when I sit down and when I stand up. No, probably not. (laughs) Probably not. But it's good to remember that. There are not things that he is not acquainted with. And then we get into what reminds me of the hound of heaven. You know, I fled him down the nights and down the days, a dawn titanic gloom. I fled, you know, I fled this hound of heaven and his steadied feet followed, followed after. And he's always there. He is right there. And he's actually the one on in a search for us. So it says, Where can I go from your spirit, or where can I flee from your presence? Where can I flee from your presence? This, uh, again, is kind of like the, the hound of, Where can I run away from you? I cannot run away from you. Even if I pretend you are not there, even if I fly to the heavens or go down to the pits of Sheol, You are there. Even if I try to hide in the darkness, the darkness is like light to you. Even if I hide in the darkness of my sin, you do not close your eyes as if you're ashamed. One of the most wonderful reflections for me, and it might come off as odd, is that the Lord is never disappointed in us. Now, don't don't get me wrong, that's not actually a great thing. (laughs) It's because the reason for our human disappointment is unmet expectations. I have an expectation to uh, score 100 points in a basketball game. I score only 62 or something. And I'm disappointed. Well, the Lord's not disappointed. He knew I was only going to score 62. I have a hope that I'm going to get this beautiful house and family, and and I don't, and I ruin it in a lot of different ways. Well, the Lord's not disappointed because he didn't. <laughs> he knew it. You know, I think that's... Sometimes it's a hard thing to hear from our parents. You know, I'm not mad at you. I'm just disappointed. Well, thanks. Meaning you expected better, and I didn't live up to it. I think it's better to hear from the Lord, I still love you. And maybe it's probably good to hear from our parents, too. We fall. And one of the ways that the enemy gets at us is through disappointment. This prideful expectation that I was never going to fall. 
this prideful expectation that I could do it on my own, that I could rely on myself. And then I'm disappointed when I fall short. Well, the saint in in their humility, the saints in their humility, are not disappointed in their sins either. They have a an outlook like the Lord does in knowing that if I try to do it on my own, I will fall, and I am weak. But if I give my life to the Lord, he will sustain me. We get into the next stanza. I was formed... For it was you who formed me in my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Imagine this, the Lord, you know, like how much care does someone you see knitting something together? I mean, they really have a grasp for that thing that they're creating. You know, I mean, you might see a sweater or a hat or a gloves as the, or or, or like a, a blanket or something as the finished result. And the person that's receiving that, knitted thing looks at it and says wow this is a nice composite but the person that actually knit it together knows every single little piece it reminds me when i'm doing yard work or i'm building something the person that builds it and puts it together by their hand agonizes over every little thing and i have a a patio and i've built some tile in our bathroom and I've done some tile for other people and patios other places and my you know like my eyes I can see every little brick because I remember putting that brick in and maybe if someone else was helping me I still I've, I've agonized every over every little tile and every little brick in our bathroom I can see every you know I can remember stuffing that you know those tiles into the glue Imagine our Lord knitting us together. This is, again, this imaginative imagery of the Lord really caring. It's not just like an assembly line of people or something, an assembly line of, of blankets or something. Someone actually took the time to knit this blanket together. That person really cared about that thing. And they could show you every little piece of the yarn or whatever they were using. And they probably remember what they were watching or doing when they knit it together because it really meant something to to them. I praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works. Again, this is just a reminder that the Lord really does create us good. And I am wonderfully made because I am made by the the creator not just because i'm in a in an assembly line of people just getting shoved out the door but because i have been knit together by my creator my frame was not hidden from you when i was being made in secret intricately woven i love that word it's difficult to say with my lip not working very well but i still love it intricately woven in the depths of the earth it's kind of this hidden away, secret, this maiden secret, hidden in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In the book were written all the days that were formed for me. All the, all the days written just for me. This is a God who really cares about me. He searches me and knows me. He knit me together. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God. How vast is the sum of them. I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. Even though your thoughts are as vast, more vast than all of the sand of the seashores in the entire planet, I know that I am still intricately woven together and loved independently. Sometimes it's very easy to think of the Lord's love as a collective. 
he collectively loves all of us that he died for us. But it's sometimes difficult and quite probing for us to think about the Lord loving just me. And I encourage you to read over this psalm again and maybe listen to the beginning of the podcast or listen to this a number of times and think about the Lord's real care just for you, the listener. And if you're sharing this with someone else, them as well. But really, it's for you to listen to. I could imagine David writing this psalm feeling incredibly loved feeling incredibly loved, that the Lord loved him so much that he knew that he was created by hand, by the, by the creator, in secret, in kind of this private, intimate creation, not just this factory of humans being spit out the depths of the earth, but in this intimate interaction of knitting, of forming and framing, like a a real craftsman who cares and loves about his his craft. And we are that creation. So I encourage you to think about that. One of the things that we take for granted sometimes is that Jesus loves us. And I try to remind my daughter, probably, maybe I even remind her too much. She might take it for granted too, because now that I, now that I say it so often, I, I do recall, you know, I do say it to her and say, Teresa, do you know what? And she said, she says, you love me? And I said, yeah, do you know who else? Jesus loves me. Mommy loves me. Moses loves me. That's our dog. Grandma loves me. But I really, I mean, I say it every single day because I really want her to know it to be true. That Jesus really loves her intimately and searches her and knows every single hair on her head. Knows even the silliest stuff that we do, the sitting and the standing and the tying of our shoes and the putting on of clothes and the brushing of our teeth. He knows every swish of that toothbrush, you know. Every single comb of our hair, he's there with us. I encourage you to pray about this and and really to accept it if you haven't or if you're having a hard time knowing of the Father's love. Maybe you've had a difficult time in your life with a human father loving you. I encourage you to be fathered by God today. By the way, a great book by John Eldridge, Fathered by God. I encourage you to be fathered by God today and and to hear his voice through mine or your own reading of the psalm, to hear his voice saying, I love you. Insert your name. Make it intimate. I love you, Susan. I love you, Justin. To hear the Father say your name. Maybe even put your name before each stanza or something. Justin, I search you and I know you. Justin, I know when you sit and when you stand. Make it real for you. Lord, we ask you that you can help us to know how much you love us. Help us be reservoirs of your love that it may spill over into the entire East Metro that our neighbors and everyone else may know of your love for them as well. Help us to be beacons in the East Metro. Help us to be billboards of your love for for everyone we encounter. We ask all this in your holy name. Amen.